Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Today we are doing the final assembly on our Ultimate SG Style Guitar Kit from Solo Music Gear. So this beauty is getting a full contingent of upgraded hardware that works top to bottom. We're going to do some shielding work. We're going to get all the new parts in there. In the next video, we're going to test it out because we're going to go through the, the full install in this one. Uh, I'm also going to do a separate video on the Tunematic bridge. So we're putting in our Gibson bridge. I've re-drilled the smaller holes for that and everything. And I think it's about time that I did a video telling you guys basically everything you need to know about one of those bridges, how to put it in, how to set it up, that kind of thing. So we're going to do that in a separate video. Uh, but yeah, in this one, we're going to get it all installed. In the last video, we did our fret leveling and everything. I think I showed it to you guys. Let me see if I can give you a better look here. Fret leveling and crowning, everything is looking just awesome from that perspective. So nice and shiny. I think this thing is going to play beautifully. You all know we've got our semi-gloss finish. We've got our flame maple that kind of fades into the opaque finish here as per the customer's orders. So all of that is looking good. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So go ahead, crack your favorite beverage and uh, let's get started. To start with, we are putting on, like I said, our Gibson Tunematic bridge. So this is a actual Gibson model. Um, unique aspect of this one, it doesn't have the string slots cut into it. So we're gonna do that using our Hosco nut files. We're gonna use the same thing on the bridge. Those are from Solo Music Gear. In fact, let me go ahead and get this out of the way. The kit, Solo Music Gear. The bridge, the works. Everything pretty much that I'm using in this, in this video from the kit to the hardware to the tools is all from Solo Music Gear. Huge thank you to them. And uh, if you want any of their stuff, check out the Solo Music Gear link. Solo Guitars is what they're calling themselves, but Solo Music Gear link in the description. It's an affiliate link. If you pick anything up through there, helps me out. No, I do not work for them, but they, uh, yeah, they make videos like this possible for me. So I appreciate that. Hopefully I'm not making you dizzy with the camera movement. On the other end of the spectrum, way up here, we're using the ratio tuners. These things are unreal, balanced gears. So something, yeah, something, something interesting about these. You notice when you're tuning a guitar and you've got your typical tuners on there, you know, it takes like eight cranks to do one string and then the other one, it's one crank and they move the same amount. Well, these are a balanced ratio. So you don't have that. It's the same amount of movement essentially for each string with the same amount of tuning. These are beautiful. I think the customer is going to be really happy with these. As you know, this is a commission job. Uh, we're doing upgraded electronics. This is Emerson. They're the ones who did this. Uh, again, Solo Music Gear supplied this. Have I not opened this yet? I guess not. Anyway, the Emerson pre-wired Gibson SG kit. It's nice. I've taken a look at it online, I guess. I haven't opened this one specifically. You guys know I usually use Gun Street Wiring Shop. Um, but Solo Music Gear is helping me out on this one, so we're using the Emerson. It's going to be really nice. The DiMarzio PAF pickups. I mean, what more could you want for an SG style guitar? PAF pickups, those are going to be awesome. This guy's going to sound beautiful. Obviously, we've got our Gibson stop tail, and again, we'll cover the setup for that. And our Tusk nut. We're, I think, going to do strap locks on this one, but I gotta confirm with the customer whether he wants strap locks or strap buttons. We got lots of both of those. And correct me if I'm wrong, that is about it. Yep, that's about it. So, without further ado, let's get started. All right, first things first, let's get our electronics cavity shielded on this guy. Now this is a dual humbucker guitar, so it's not strictly necessary to do this necessarily well that was redundant um anyway if you're playing under you know like a neon sign if the thing's being used for gigging and whatnot it helps it it can't hurt really to do your shielding work um with a single coil guitar it's particularly important for me when i do my own guitars it's really not a big deal because the only person i play for is mostly, well, nobody, because I almost never play, but when I do, it's just for you guys to demo a guitar, and I'm nowhere where there's really gonna be all that much buzz or electrical interference, but this isn't my guitar, so 
notwithstanding that it is a dual humbucker guitar that probably won't buzz because that's the point of those pickups, we're going to do it anyway. So what you want to do is just, yeah, shield off your cavities. You can do this in a number of ways. Uh, I am still someone who thinks that copper tape is the best way, but there are certainly other options. Uh, the most common way, particularly in stock models, is to use copper, not copper, sorry, shielding paint, conductive paint. I'm getting a little distracted here as I look for the appropriate burnishing tool for this. And I'm not sure why I'm having so much difficulty finding it, but here we go. Let's use this. So the, uh, yeah, the most common option is conductive paint, but you can use a number of things, pretty much anything that is conductive will serve the purpose. So for example, you can use an adhesive spray and put tin foil in there. Nothing wrong with that. Or you can use aluminum tape. As long as you make sure that it's conductive, there is aluminum tape that is not conductive, so be careful. Uh, I made the mistake of purchasing that one. Obviously didn't have a multimeter with me at the hardware store, and lo and behold, not conductive. I found other uses for it, but I've never used it to shield the guitar. So you need something that's going to conduct electricity. That's the entire point of the shielding. And that gives you as close to possible as, uh, or as close as possible rather, to a Faraday cage. And that's how you shield off the cavity from electronic interference. So I'm gonna start with the edges. And then I'm gonna run some along the cavity itself. And we'll get this adequately shielded off. Now, I'm not going to shield the humbucker cavities. You can certainly do that. The most, let's call it the uh, redundant or, or whatever way, the, the most careful way to do this is to shield off, I'm going to tape right over the controls there, is to shield off all of the cavities and then solder your tape lines to make sure that there's continuity, electrical continuity across them and you can take a finishing nail and kind of poke at them to make sure that they're connecting to each other and then solder them and then um, finish off by taking a wire or a guitar string and soldering from one cavity to the other and creating a connection between those as well. That is the 100% method, like the, the most careful way of doing this. It's also wildly unnecessary in most circumstances, particularly if you're using humbuckers, but you do want to make sure that there is some shielding across these cavities uh, if you're trying to be careful, which I am. Also, I now need to recreate <laughs> the holes that my electronics are going to go through because I've taped right over them. Be careful. You can also accidentally short out your electronics if you're not careful when you're shielding everything. So. It's actually not when you're shielding everything, it's when you're installing the electronics afterward. So just be aware of that. Uh, if your electronics aren't working, if your guitar is just not making noise, there's a chance that you've created a situation where two of your lugs, the ground and the hot, for example, are making contact with each other through the copper, and then you won't get any sound. So for someone who plays like me, that's not a bad thing, but Generally, that's not what people are looking for. Anyway, I'm going to cut these holes back out and then we'll move on. All right, holes are back in. Now we're going to go ahead and install our electronics. So let's take a look at what we're dealing with here. Pretty much what you would anticipate. Nice, big, high quality pots. Obviously high quality caps. Just Generally, good stuff. So I'm going to get these unmounted from here and go ahead and pop them in there. Ooh, we may have to drill out a little bit uh, to get them to fit. Stranger things have certainly happened. I know every time, I mean, I, I tell them to use the big ones, but every time I get the Gun Street ones um, for the pots, I need to drill out my kits a little more. So we'll get these installed in there. And... Uh, Man, that does look really nice. Very clean. 
Very, very clean. The guys who do these kits, these guys in Gun Street and, and Obsidian Wire, the guys who do these things, they do a great job. All right, let's get this mounted and then we'll get our pickups in place. So we're switching into voice over here uh, to kind of speed this up a little, but even so, this is actually going to end up being two parts for the assembly of the guitar because I ended up with a lot more footage than I anticipated. There were a couple of complications and a couple of things that I wanted to show you guys. Um, so this is now going to be a two-part assembly video. And I'm going to use the extra time here to hopefully give you guys some extra tips and show you how to deal with a couple problems, including one big one that you'll see come up uh, later in the video that I did not anticipate. Uh, so it was an interesting problem to try to solve, particularly with the guitar being in the state that it is now completely finished. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll get to that uh, as <laughs> when the time comes. So I'm trying to install this Emerson uh, harness here and I'm just testing it out. And I, sh I should have done this prior to finishing, um, but I got kind of ahead of myself and I went and finished this guitar and you'll see that that causes me another issue later on um, because I should have wired it up, I should have done a test assembly. And some people ask me when I do those, why are you wiring it up without finishing it? Well, it's good practice and, and I think it's an important step and you'll see why here uh, in a little while. But first off, is what I'm doing right now, which is having to drill out the holes further to make sure that this harness fits. And that'll happen anyway if you do a test wire up with the original hardware and then you upgrade to something like this or a gun street kit uh, later on, you're going to have to probably drill out those holes. Now I used a normal drill bit and I did it from the back because drill bits pull material and I didn't want to pull up my finish by drilling from the front. There are better ways to do this now though. Or there were then two, and my recommendation now, and the way that I've, I've done it since this, is to use step drill bits. You can also use a reamer or something like that, but the step drill bits I found very helpful, and you'll see me use uh, one by hand actually to widen out a, a hole for the bridge after, but they're a nice way to do it. They're less risky. They don't pull material quite the same way, so they're a better option in my opinion. Here we are coming up on one of those moments that I think is going to be entertaining for you guys, but was the exact opposite of that for me. Uh, and this is evidence that I, I should have done an assembly first. I should have tried this thing out. But this has never happened to me before. So I'm going to install the pickup, and I'm, I'm looking for the, the hole to put the wire through to do that. And I'm very confused, because there isn't one. Uh, this is never, I've never seen that on a kit before. Um, this is a really nice kit, but I, I, it doesn't have the holes for the electronics, or there may have been one, but, well, no, there wasn't. So, I have to drill them, <laughs> which is not something that you want to be doing once the guitar is finished, and frankly, not, not something that's all that fun to do, period. Um, this should have been done by me, if I was doing it, prior to installing the neck, so I could just run the bit down through the cavity from the face of the guitar to drill the hole between the pickups, and then I would have had more access to do this, or at least I wouldn't have had to worry about my finish. So I do a lot of checking here, uh, because I can't go in, well, if I screw this up, I have to basically redo either the whole, a whole section of the finish pretty much, or maybe re-clear coat the entire guitar, I have to take it apart and everything not fun. So I'm checking repeatedly to make sure that I've got the right length here and that I'm going in at the right angle. And it works. Thankfully, I'm doing it slowly and carefully. I've got several layers of tape protecting my finish, including that premium blue 3M tape that's basically rubberized. And I, I get the hole in place. So the between the cavities wasn't too bad. The one from the cavity to the control, uh, the pickup cavity to the control cavity was a little bit more challenging, but I managed it and then I go to install the pickups and I realize it's not wide enough and I can't get all of the wires through there. So after this little experiment, this little test here trying to do that, I spent like the next half hour <laughs> widening out that hole very, very carefully and making it so that I could get both pickup wires through. And once I achieved that, I went to this stage where it's now time to actually install the pickups. So, uh, yeah, the moral of the story, do a wire up first before you finish your guitar uh, and check for the holes before you glue your neck in, if it's a set neck. Fun times. Anyway, I'm, I'm 
now installing the pickups, so I need to put in the holes for the mounting rings. This is also something that it's not a bad idea to do before finishing, but it's not a big deal. You just have to be careful. You may have to widen out the holes after finishing anyway, so I just drill them out after finishing most of the time. I marked them out with an awl, made sure that everything was square, and then I'm using a tiny drill bit, and I'm just drilling in a little way. Not very far, it doesn't take much, they're very small screws. My wiring harness is all installed at this point. I didn't uh, film that because it's just a matter of putting the things through the holes and tightening some nuts after you're, you're done. Um, and now I'm running the wire through and thankfully I did actually, like I said, manage to get enough space to be able to run the wires for both of the pickups. It was a, a pain and one of the more nerve wracking steps that I've taken on a guitar and this is coming from a guy who's literally lit a finished guitar on fire on video before so yeah this this was an interesting little uh, step and, and one that caught me by surprise once I get the two pickups in place it's time to go ahead and get them screwed down before I flip over the guitar and work on the back so they don't fall out but while I've got it in this situation I'm also going to install my ground wire here because uh, you need to run that through from the front to the back. You can do that either on the bridge or the stop tail. It doesn't really matter. In this case, there actually was a pre-drilled drilled hole for that on the stop tail. So I feed that in, make sure it's going to contact the stop tail post here, and now I'm hammering in the post. And I'm using my fretting hammer, the rubber side of it. You don't want to just bang away at this with a, an actual hammer. With a metal hammer, it can deform the metal, or if you miss, it can mash the finish. Um, if you're using a metal hammer, use a block of wood in between to create a barrier so that you don't have that problem and you don't create deformities. And you'll see I'm kind of holding close to the end of the hammer as I do this. It's funny, now upon, in retrospect when I'm doing this voiceover, I think I did this one right-handed, or these two right-handed, and then I'm pretty sure I hammered in the actual bridge post left-handed, but whatever. Anyway, get those in. Tightening up my screws real quick on the pickups so that they're all nicely installed and not rattling around as I continue hammering things in because next up I need to hammer in the bridge posts. And if you followed this series from the beginning you'll know that I actually had to glue dowels into the holes for the bridge posts and then re-drill them because the Gibson bridge uses such small posts compared to the ones that come on the pick uh, on the stock kits rather and the ones that you generally see in replacement uh, parts. So here I tested them, they didn't quite fit, so I'm just going in by hand actually with one of these step bits and widening out the top of the hole a little bit. Basically all I'm doing is taking out the little bit of finish buildup that's around the rim because I test fit these things before I did the finish and now I need to get it back to that original size to make sure that they fit in there again. Once those are in place, I can go ahead and install those bridge posts. Now I've got this guitar on a little foam pad so that also kind of deadens the blows a little bit because it dampens the uh, the contact on the base of this thing. But it's still pretty easy to do this. And you just hit it lightly. Oh yeah, I am going left-handed now. You just hit it lightly. Uh, it's better to do, you know, 150 <laughs> hits with the hammer to, to get them in there slowly than it is to do a few big ones that have more risk of you damaging something while you're doing it. As I said at the beginning, we are going to do a separate video on uh, setting up this bridge, and that'll include putting the slots in it to let the strings run through it properly. So for now, we're just making sure that everything fits. We'll get these pegs spun into place, which is a very quick and easy process, and just make sure that everything is drilled appropriately, which it is. Bridge drops on there nicely, no problems there and get the stop tail installed too and make sure that that fits correctly which spoiler alert it does no problems with that either and we're basically good to go I think this thing is looking pretty nice from the top now uh, got everything kinda ready except for the electronics in this portion of the guitar and of course the strap lock finish is looking good I'm actually surprised and very thankful that I managed to get that drilling done <laughs> for uh, for the cavities without marring that. The last thing we're going to do in today's video is the nut. So we're putting on a tusk nut on this guy and they come obviously a little bit big uh, 
so we need to get this thing shaved down to the appropriate size. They're pre-slotted and everything, but a little big. So I'm taking a pencil here that I've literally cut in half and, and sanded flat, and I'm using that to mark the level of the frets on the nut. And you, you don't want a lot of action up top here, obviously, so you, you want to shave down the nut to about that level, a little bit above it. Uh, and it, because this one's already pre-slotted, I'm not just going to go and cut my slots really deep. What I'm going to do is just take some material off the bottom of the nut. It's also a little bit wide, so I'm going to take a little bit off the sides as well. Now this process is fairly straightforward, maybe a little bit time consuming, but uh, nothing really complicated about it. You just need to make sure that you keep the nut square, that you're not shaving a bunch off of one side and putting an angle in the bottom. So I'm using a fret file here from Solo to do that, and take my material off the bottom, and I've transposed kind of that same distance that I had excess at the top onto the bottom so I knew how much I was going to take off. Once I've done that, I take another file and I just shave the sides and then round them again. This is something that you want to be checking frequently when you're doing. It takes a little bit of effort to take material off the sides, so it's not a really fast thing that you need to worry about, but you do want to check it against the width of the neck frequently to make sure you don't take too much off. You certainly don't want your nut to be smaller than your neck. That would just, well, that would just look silly. Once you've got it to the right width, you can do a little bit of rounding work with the file or a piece of sandpaper and you should be good to go. So that's shaped appropriately now. I'm just going to take some of my Starbond glue. You guys have seen me at least demo this before and I have a couple other tutorials and tricks that are coming out with it. I'm using the medium here and I'm just going to use a little bit of super glue and set this nut in place. Um, the Starbond glue is actually not from Solo Music here. There's a link in the description with a discount for that if you're looking for super glue. They've got a bit, bunch of different kinds bunch of different thicknesses, even a couple different colors. This stuff's clear, but it's a good option. All right, guys, that is it for this video. Give it a thumbs up if you want to, and I will see you in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe so you get notified, and as always, thanks for watching. We'll continue this in part two.